Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we're going to talk about the five petal flower pattern from Denise Johnson and you can click down below on our website and open the link for this pattern here and this pattern is again it's written by Jan Denise Johnson and it's very simple um, very easy to do it is basically five different little petals and they're made like miniature hats so we're going to make one petal and assemble it together uh, so you get an idea of how this is made so to find the pattern again you're going to go click on the link down below and open this up and we will go through it you're going to need a 12 peg flower loom and if you're not familiar with them they look like this this is a 12 peg uh, some call it a bloom loom it doesn't matter the um, the color they are measured from the center peg to center peg three quarters of an inch and there's uh, they're also called an extra large gauge loom so you could use another substitution but that's what this one's calling for and then you're going to need your um, knitting tool or your hook uh, some scissors and you'll need a tapestry needle now you can use your regular yarn tapestry needle or plastic one but if you want to fit it through your buttons here you're going to need a smaller needle probably a metal needle and um, this is actually a, um, a dental floss threader so if you can't get your thick yarn through the eye of this little needle that's a good little tip for you um, I get mine from a company called gum G U M and it's just like a little open openable tool and if you saw one of my last videos I have a little blooper because I didn't realize that I had the wrong needle so I use that also you're going to need about 50 yards of some worsted weight uh, yarn you could probably sub with something else I'm adding on here now she doesn't talk about it but I've got these little alligator clips okay so you see these little hair barrettes and I have made mine and adding this little clip in here and so you could clip this into your knitting if you want to and then um, you can add on your button which we can do later I've got five pieces over here already done I'm going to show you how to make one and then we'll assemble it together so let's get started alright so we're going to start with a slip knot and you don't need much of a tail go ahead and feed this through the inside of your loom to the anchor peg on the outside and pull that now we're going to do a drawstring cast on this is a modified drawstring cast on we're going to loop it around the second to the last and the first peg and then go around every other okay so do an aerial shot here every other peg just like this okay now when we come to the beginning we're now going to go around the front okay so it's the second to last peg again is going to have one on top of it and this one's going to have on top of it see these three in a row are going to have it um, all on in the front of the peg that's totally right so now we're going to go around and uh, I just like to kind of come around to the back here and just hook it on this anchor peg and then now it sort of holds it on there for me or I can use my other finger okay and then go ahead and knit over or work the stitch okay. okay now when you get back to the beginning again you're gonna see this kind of jumble up of it looks like three stitches on this second to last peg that's totally correct go ahead and knit that over you can knit them at the same time or one at a time both of them so you you only have one peg um, uh, only one loop remaining on that peg uh, okay so we're going to do 10 rows of um, your knit stitch I'm gonna be doing a flat knit she calls for a knit stitch in the pattern I asked her um, what kind she did she did a U um, which is simply taking it to the back like this and knitting it that way but um, if as you can see my um, my sample came out 
just fine. So if you want to try the U and if it's too loose, try the, the flat or vice versa. If it's too tight in the flat knit, uh, then you can try the, um, the U. If you have a thin worsted weight yarn, then I would try the flat uh, because your gauge is going to be so thick in here and you might have to add an extra row. But basically what we're doing is we're, we're making miniature hats and we're making them from the top down because this is going to draw string pull and then we're going to bind off uh, and it'll look like a little bitty hat. Okay, so I've gone around one time. Go ahead and go 10 more times around, and then when you're done with the 10th row, uh, pause your video, and um, anyway, pause your video, and we'll meet you back in just a moment. Okay, so we've come to the end of our 10 rows, and if you wanna double check and make sure that you've got all the rows that you need, um, come to the inside of your work here, and if you wanna kinda of flip over and play with these loops here, you'll see one loop that kind of falls um, towards the front here that you can't see as well and then they start kind of bumping out like this you can count these ladders here so I've got um, let's skip the first one underneath the back here and then we got one two three four five six seven eight nine and then ten is that last one that's hanging up on the back of this peg here so we've got ten rows and because this is a drawstring cast on um, we can do a couple of things. We could go ahead and finish the bind off. She says to do a basic bind off, or we can go ahead and finish out one part of this. I think it's kind of uh, nice to just um, use it while it's on the loom here uh, to make it easier and go ahead and pull this uh, off here. Okay, that's just the, the where I had the anchor yarn. And when you start pulling a drawstring cast on, if you've never done it before, if you see it pulling, look at that. All right, see, it just kind of starts tightening up on you. Now, you can pull it and then go ahead and poke through this um, extra strand here and pull it up through the inside, okay? So this is going to be the inside of our miniature hat, okay? And hey, if you want to make miniature hats for your tree, go ahead. <laughs> Do it this way. <laughs> Okay, so see how I've pulled it up and now we've got this nice little circle here. Um, now we can actually go ahead and just tie this off and use your tapestry needle and finish this up. And then you won't have to do this when it's off of the loom, so you've got something kind of holding it for you. Which is nice if you need an extra hand. So, uh, I'm just going to come up through um, another one of these loops, not the last one that I did, but the uh, next one. Okay, I'm going to go through this loop, hopefully not making too big of a mess here, okay, and um, if you can leave a little bit of that loop before you fully, fully pull it all the way through, and then pull it through one more time, and it'll close that up, and if you did it, uh, mine's nice and tight, but if you accidentally left too big of a gap, you could go and grab some more loops from the opposite side again and pull it tight. You want this to really be closed up because it's going to be the outside of your flower. And I'll show you on the flower sample where that is. Okay, so what we just did, sorry my button's not connected here, but what this is going to be is the tip of each flower. Okay? So it's this part right here, okay? And then now we're gonna bind off this part that you can't see in here. What we're gonna do is this. We're going to bind it off flat and then we're gonna stitch it together to make this looks like a little finger, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now. So you can just take this off and I just take this part and tuck it in and it might have to uh, tuck in a few times or you can snip it if you want to. Um, I use mine to make it nice and I just left it in there, the tail, and it's just nice and fluffy, and I wouldn't do anything with that except throw it away. Um, I'm gonna go, um, you can do like this and wrap around and do your basic bind off, um, but essentially you need to knit these next two stitches one more time. So I'm holding it around here because I think it's kind of nice on this little flower loom. Okay, so I've knit the first and the second peg. Let's take the second peg and move it over to the first. 
and then we're just going to work that stitch. Okay, we've bound off one peg. Now let's move the first peg over to the second, and now we're going to call this peg now our first peg. Okay, so now after you've done that first step, now you only need to, need to knit the number two peg. So we're going to knit the number two peg, move it to the one, work the stitch, okay, and then move it. Just, just like a regular bind off. Take the number two peg, knit a stitch, move it over, wah, work that stitch, okay, and move it over so it becomes the one. So now you can see why I'm kind of just holding this over to the side here. It makes it go really fast once you get the motion going on. Okay, and just keep moving these on over and just because this loom is small enough for me to hold it in my hand well I have big hands so I apologize if you can't do that with if you have smaller hands but um, because of the size of this loom and because I can do that um, I tend to just hold this extra yarn over here if it's a flat knit stitch. So it's really convenient for the way we're binding this off. And then it kind of helps me keep the yarn nice and taut. Okay. And you don't have to worry about being too tight. Like if you're like, oh, Kristen, I'm always really tight on my bind off. That's okay. This one, you, you can be tight because you're going to actually end up sewing this together. So it's a very forgiving project. The only thing that I found with it was the yarn choice that I made. So I picked this variegated. It's, it's sort of self-striping, but it's got like a lot of solid and then it has a variegated color to it. Um, it's a anti-pill worsted weight from Deborah Norville. Uh, Premier yarns and uh, you can see that some of them are completely solid and other ones have um, modeling in it and solid okay so I've got this last one well I didn't really have to move it over I'm gonna go ahead and knit it one more time and then we're gonna pull this off the loom Just set your loom aside and then now you can take it and then you're going to cut this. Uh, now, uh, what I want to do is I'm actually going to, if, let's say this is your number five, uh, your, your fifth one to make. All of them, you can cut them pretty short. And I'll just give you this extra little tip. If you will make the last one a really long end, like maybe a foot or something, then, um, so, you know, about that long. Um, if you'll make it long, then you can use this part to sew in and put them all together. So now I'm going to show you how to um, stitch this together to make it flat. Make sure that, see that part right here where I have it tucked in, it just kind of fell right inside, but tuck any loose strands in. And we're going to thread our tapestry needle. Okay. All right, now um, I like to close this up like I would, like I would in the round. So uh, you always want to grab the the first stitch on there and kind of pull it pull it through to really close that up. I mean, the real way to really close that up is to kind of imitate another um, knit stitch here, so you get that circle kind of look. Okay, so now that we've really made that joined. Uh, I'm going to flip them and mash them together here. Just very technical terms, I know it. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take the, um, the tapestry needle and we're going to whip stitch around. I'm going to go through the top. Uh, there's this, this is like a chain. There's like two loops on the back here and two loops on the front. And so I'm just going to go through both of them and pull it tight. And then... Um, you can actually just go through them again or the next one and then it lets it puts this little whip stitch here okay 
Now I'm going to go the next two, the next set that are across from each other and whip them up. Now the directions don't call for a whip stitch. It just wants you to sew them together. So this is how I'm doing it. When I start doing the rest of it, you'll see that some of them I did a little bit differently because that was part of my um, learning this pattern. So um, I'm just going to tell you from the experience that I had in making these, the whip stitch is nice because it lays down flat. And then when we pull in all those loops, it see how nice it flattens it down for you. Okay, so when we get to the end, just go all the way through. Okay. Now, when you're making all these other ones here, let's, we're going to come to the assemble part. So if you need to make your, um, all your other ones, go ahead and stop and start making them. And then you can join me back up. So, but once you've made your five, now I've got five here and I've got an extra one, but um, I'm going to actually end up trading these two out. Okay. Just ignore this one. Okay. So I'm going to assemble it. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to use this one? Which one do you want me to use? Ah, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> I'm just, oh, this is the fun part. Okay, so you figure out how you want to lay them out. Now, she says to put them in a line. I'm going to tell you to put them how you want them in your, uh, your flower here. Okay, so you get them how you want them all laid out, and then we'll put them in a line. So let's say I'm going to do this and lay them out. Okay, then I'm going to lay them in a line. But before I go on, I'm going to show you if this was my last one, um, of the of the other four, I would just work this needle in here and then pull it out and clip my yarn and then um, and then kind of tug it back in and then it would hide your tail. So that's how you would hide the tail of these other ones. That's why these are all nicely finished off. Okay, there's no tail. Okay, so I've just woven them back inside themselves. So now what I want to do is I'm going to line these all up and pull them out in order. So this is the order that. Kristen wants here. All right, so we're going to work our way down the line here. Now we're going to pull this through this corner tip here. And basically, like if they're going to pinch toward you, the, the fold is in the back. And then we're going to do all five of them the same way. Be sure and, and get it in the same spot. Okay. You may have to kind of start pulling some of them off just a little bit, but make sure they don't fall off of your, your tail here. Okay, got the corners. Corners. Last one. Okay. So we've got them all together, right? Well, um, we've got to connect them. So we're going to go back through the first one and I'm going to go all the way through the first one, not just the first corner. Okay. So I'm going to pull this still making sure that we're not completely pulling that, um, through. Let's see. Let's tug on this. Got that part here. Okay. So it's connected here. So we're going to, go ahead and put it through this first flower or petal. All right. Okay. Pull it here and then we're going to give a really good tug. Okay. Don't break your yarn. All right. See how they're connected. It looks just like this, right? But this one's really stiff. Okay. So what you're going to do, well, I put this alligator clip here. Yes. But what we do is we flip it over on the back side and see how they're a little poofy then you can just tack these down here okay so you can go through and sew them together okay all right well my tail was a little too short that's okay. All 
All right, so you're just going to continue to go along the back here and get them all nice and taut. And I'm just working my way diagonally across. Okay, so I think I've got most of them on here, but I want to make sure that I've got everything connected. Alright, so now that I've got it all done, uh, I'm going to go back through one of these last uh, loops here and really get it um, all the way through. And I think I may have to rethread this for a second because I got mine really short. So hopefully you didn't get yours too short. And this little floss threader is going to come in handy here. I'm going to put this through. Watch this trick. Do, 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 do. Ta da! <laughs> Isn't that cool? Okay. And then you can pull it through and make a knot. All right. So now we've got this cute little guy together. And then all you have to do is um, you can trim that off or sew in one of these little alligator clips. I'd probably get like another longer one. And um, you want to first sew on your button here. All right. So you would take your tap other tapestry needle and sew that in. If your yarn is too thick and uh, you still need this thin one, you could split the ply. So if you needed to, you could split this yarn and use the thread or use another um, like thin thread if you wanted to do that. Um, if you like it this way, you could leave it that way or even make a little um, yarn button. And then if you want to put on one of these alligator clips here, uh, what I would do is, um, I'm going to show you here, you put in um, the yarn through the middle of this clip here and then go down and then when you come back up go to the other side so you're coming around and down around and down and then it won't it won't come out okay it could slide but it's not actually going to go anywhere so you could clip this on um, any headband or um, or hat as you see fit or just clip it in some hair so instead of like committing to attach it to one particular hat it can um, you know, be more versatile. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial here. So grab a button of your choice and put that on there, put on your clip, do whatever you like to do. But I'm so glad that you joined me again at Good Knit Kisses. Have fun and happy knitting. Bye-bye.